Let's move on in our discussion of PV system components to batteries. I will spend a few videos discussing different aspects of batteries that are important to, for PV system modelers and designers. This video will focus on why we need batteries in certain PV systems and understanding their purpose. This is followed by getting to know the different types of batteries that are currently available, and finally, I will explain to you how to electrically model a battery. Batteries are an essential part of certain PV systems. You can see here in our overview of components that batteries are part of the balance of systems. You may notice that I also include charge controllers in this slide. Since they are principally concerned with battery connected systems, we will discuss them in this set of videos. Okay, so let's look at how a battery and a charge controller are connected in a system. Batteries are typically used in off-grid PV systems. You'll notice that the PV modules are connected to a charge controller. This charge controller then connects to a battery as well as an inverter and DC loads. So you can see that a battery is connected on the DC side of the PV system. Basically, the current from the PV modules will either flow into the battery or go to the loads. If the load demands uh, more current than the PV modules can produce, current will flow from the battery to the loads. So why does this system really need a battery? Why can't we just power the loads with solar energy directly? One major reason is the mismatch between supply and demand. Here we have a typical solar irradiance curve throughout the day. There's a peak around the middle of the day and no irradiance during the nighttime. However, do we turn on all our electricity when the sun comes up and turn everything off at night? No, things don't work that way. Now, in blue, you see a typical load demand curve. This demand curve has been scaled such that you can equate the red curve to how much power a PV system can put out relative to the blue curve. You can see there are times of the day where the sun is providing more energy than is required, shown here by the green area, and times of the day when it isn't enough, shown by the red area. An energy storage device such as a battery can assist with this. During the green period, that excess energy can charge the battery, and during the red periods, the battery can output that energy that it stored during the green period. Daily fluctuations like this are one big issue, but let's take a step back and see a larger one. In this figure, you can see a load demand curve for the whole year, instead of one day. The x-axis shows our time in months. Now in blue, you see the corresponding irradiance curve for those 12 months. You can see that the summer months we have a lot of extra energy, which is shown by the green color, while we do not have enough for the winter months, which is in the red area of the figure. This is known as seasonal mismatch of a PV system. You need some type of energy storage to solve this mismatch. If you were to make the PV system large enough for the winter, then the system would be huge and would not be cost effective. Additionally, you would waste a lot of energy in the summertime. Therefore, if you have an electricity system that is totally dependent on PV, you need some storage that can handle these seasonal fluctuations. So we have daily and seasonal fluctuations which require energy storage from the battery. You can also probably imagine that the PV power production doesn't always look as smooth as that red curve due to clouds passing by overhead, for example. A battery will help with this as well. However, there is another reason why off-grid systems need a battery. This is the voltage of the system. You are well aware by now of the IV curve of a solar panel. You also learned that if we connect the solar panel directly to a load, it will change depending on the demand of the load and this will be very difficult to control. Batteries, on the other hand, are quite easily simulated by a constant voltage source. This essentially defines the system voltage. There are subtle changes to the voltage, and we will discuss those in a few slides, but a battery acts as the bedrock for the voltage of an off-grid system. This is not the case for a grid-connected system, because in those systems, the grid itself supplies that stable voltage. Okay, so now you know the purpose of a battery. Let's go into some different types of batteries. Batteries can be split into two main types. The first are primary batteries. These are batteries such as zinc carbon or alkaline batteries such as the ones you buy in shops to power some household items. 
These batteries can be built in a way that they hold some charge through chemical processes and they can release that charge when connected in an electrical circuit. However, primary batteries can only do that. Once the charge is depleted, the battery runs out and you have to go get another one. Secondary batteries, on the other hand, take energy in as well. They are also called rechargeable batteries. These are only batteries of interest for PV systems. You are probably aware of a few secondary batteries such as lead acid and lithium ion batteries. Lead acid batteries are commonly used in gasoline powered cars and lithium ion batteries are used in cell phones and other consumer electronics. However, there are a number of other secondary batteries as well. Here on the x-axis we have the gravimetric energy density or the amount of energy per kilogram of a battery. On the y-axis we have the volumetric energy density or the amount of energy per liter of a battery. Ideally, battery technologies want to be light and small. So further to the upper right on this plot, the better. However, the smaller and lighter a battery becomes, the more expensive it gets. Thus, lead acid batteries are relatively a cheaper option due to their low gravimetric energy density and low volumetric energy density. This is followed by the lithium ion, lithium polymer batteries, which fare slightly better. In general, when selecting a battery for a solar home system, size is not as important a factor as it is when you select a battery for use in a mobile car device or something like that. Now, let's talk a bit about how to model a battery. In an electrical circuit, a battery can be accurately modeled by a voltage source, VB, with a series resistance, RI. The voltage provided by the voltage source will depend on the state of charge of the battery. A battery with more charge will have a higher VB than when it is discharged. The RI always stays constant regardless of the state of charge of the battery. Here we can see the model of a battery that is charging. You can tell it is charging because the current I is flowing into the positive terminal of the battery. Because of this, there will be a voltage drop over the series resistance. This means that the voltage you will measure during charging, V, will be larger than VB. VB is only measured at the terminals of the battery when the current flowing into or out of the battery is zero. But things start to look a bit different when the battery is discharging. There is a voltage drop across the resistor, but in the other direction, since current is flowing in the opposite direction. Therefore, if you were to measure the voltage of a battery during discharge, the measured voltage V would be less than VB, or the open circuit voltage of the battery. Now, before we finish this introduction, I want to talk to you a bit about batteries in grid connected systems. Though batteries are absolutely necessary in off-grid systems, they're also being used in grid connected systems as well. You may have heard of the Tesla Powerwall that is shown here. So why are people using these batteries when they have the grid? Well, as you will find out later in this course, there are some challenges with integrating solar into the grid due to the intermittent nature of solar energy. Therefore, it can sometimes be preferable, depending on the financial incentives for solar, to use all of the solar energy yourself rather than piping excess energy into the grid. Having a battery allows you to do this and can vastly limit the amount of excess energy that is fed to the grid. Furthermore, having a stable battery bank at home can help you through blackouts and other grid instabilities. This step will also be necessary if solar can manage to achieve enough penetration that significant percentage of the grid power is produced through solar. So setting up this infrastructure now will be helpful for the future. Now you know a bit about batteries. You've learned the difference between primary and secondary batteries, and you have learned a bit more about secondary battery types. Furthermore, you've learned how to electrically model a battery and how batteries are even being used in grid-connected PV systems. We will spend another few videos diving deeper into batteries.